So before this, I had the late 2016 MacBook Pro, the 13 inch, that was the base model. It wasn't the best. And at home, where I did most of my work, I was on a home-built Hackintosh, which also wasn't the best. It caused me a lot of problems. So when the M1 chips came out, I told myself that I would wait until they made a beast of a computer with those M1 chips, and I would put a bunch of money into that and use that as my all-around computer that I use at home, at my desk, and out and about wherever I am. So I can get rid of that dual core 13 inch and I can get rid of my Hackintosh at home and just have one beefy computer. And this is it. This is the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's not completely specced out. It only has the 32 gigabytes of unified memory, but it's more than enough for what I do. And that's not the important bit. This isn't a review. This thing is a great laptop, but if you wanna see a review, there's plenty of those videos on YouTube right now and they do a much better job than I ever could. I wanna to talk to you about the two setups that I have for this thing because I thought those are interesting and pretty cool. I have one setup here at the studio and I have another setup at home. And it's not the best setup. It's, it's not the most expensive setup. It's like kind of a hodgepodge of some really cool stuff that I bought specifically for this thing and a bunch of stuff that I had already that just so happens to work great with this thing. But it's a great setup that allows me to just use one cable to have this guy plugged in as a desktop computer, and when I'm done, I just unplug it, take it home, and then plug it back in when I get home. Or I don't even need to plug it back in. I can do all my video editing just in, in my bed on, on my laptop. It's awesome. I like using Macs for like 90% of what I do. Unfortunately, Macs are really bad for live streaming. So unfortunately, I do need to have a PC in my setup also. So these setups allow me to switch between both whenever I want, but let's, let's stop talking about it. Let's go check them out. So this is the little hybrid setup that I have. It's just one cable that plugs into this little Razer uh, hub and then it should just automatically go here when I hit the keyboard and wake the computer up from sleep. Any minute now. Hey! And the, uh, okay, there it is. This whole setup is mostly centered around this Razer dock. It's Thunderbolt 4. In the front, there's a headphone jack that I don't really ever use. There's also an SD card slot, which I thought would be more helpful, but this Mac already has an SD card slot. On the back, there are three Thunderbolt 3 ports, which also work as USB-C ports. There is an Ethernet, which I should probably set up, but this studio has great Wi-Fi, so I don't really need it. So it has three USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports. I don't know why it doesn't have four. There's a spot right there for a fourth one, but three is more than enough. And they do make it in RGB if you're a gamer, but uh, I, I like this one a lot more. And it matches pretty decently with the space gray. It might have matched better if I got silver. And it comes with this Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is very helpful for when I was transferring my stuff from my old MacBook to the new one. And it makes it so that just this one cable can make this MacBook plug into both of my monitors. It can plug into my keyboard and my mouse, my interface, and an Ethernet if I wanted to. And it also charges the MacBook at the same time. I believe it only does up to 90 watts charging, and this laptop, the charger that comes with it is 140 watts, but I haven't been using that charger at all. I've been doing all of my work through just this one cable, and it, it seems to be able to hold its charge just fine. I've had other USB-C docks before. This monitor has USB-C, and on my old MacBook, if I was running projects in Premiere, this wasn't sending enough power to charge the MacBook while running Premiere projects. But this Razer dock does just fine with this. So both these monitors are USB-C, so they plug into the dock just fine, and that's how they're getting their video signal. This is an ultra-wide BenQ. I forgot the name. I'll put it here somewhere. And this is the Eve Spectrum monitor that I did a review on on the main Wolf Den channel. Having two monitors is important for live streaming, so you could play a game on one and have the chat and all of your other stuff on another monitor. So I needed a setup like this. I don't know if I would have necessarily gone with an ultra wide and a regular screen. This is a little too much screen or real estate for me, but it is pretty nice to be able to edit a whole video on the ultra wide and have this for all of the other stuff. 
I was excited to see how this monitor would fare with the new MacBook Pro because this MacBook Pro is around 4K and has a 120 hertz screen. And this is a 4K monitor that's 120 hertz. But unfortunately, it doesn't do 120 hertz through uh, this USB-C connection. And I think it's the MacBook's fault. They call it ProMotion and it's like a variable refresh rate. So it's not always 120 hertz, it's like kind of 120 hertz. So uh, we're not gonna be any, we're not gonna be doing any MacBook gaming here. Another essential part of the setup is this little USB 3.0 switcher. So since I have a PC as part of my setup, if I wanna switch over to the PC side, I can just hit this button and it'll switch my keyboard and mouse to that PC. I'll also have to change the inputs on both of these monitors to go from USB-C over to DisplayPort. If you're interested in the back and forth between uh, desktop PC and, and this MacBook, you might be more interested in my second setup, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll save that for later. There's also, of course, my custom-built keyboard. There's a video on that also. My friend Robbie built this for me, and he did an absolutely phenomenal job. And this Logitech mouse, the MX Master 3. I just got this. It is fucking awesome. If you don't think you need something like a USB 3.0 switcher, this mouse can Bluetooth connect to up to three different devices. And you can hit this button to switch between all of those devices. So if you have Bluetooth in your PC and you got Bluetooth in your MacBook, you can just press this button to switch between both of them. One of the cool things about this mouse in particular is that it has different profiles that are on by default for things like Photoshop and Premiere. So you can use something like the side wheel to scroll through the timeline. There's also this button on the side that allows you to do different gestures in Mac OS. I like having things hardwired. It's a lot less confusing and, and, and they all work instantly. And plus my keyboard is hardwired. So the switcher is just easier for me. I also have this Red Scarlet interface plugged into the switcher so that if I'm using my MacBook, I can have it working there. If I want to use the PC, it'll switch over there. And I see E looking at me now because he's realizing that that's probably why the Red Scarlet cut out the other day. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> and no, I don't have this 8-bit do mouse in a glass case. This is a case for my keyboard so I don't get dust in it. This was a very expensive keyboard. Other than that, there's not much else going on. I have the PreSonus speakers. They're the cheapest ones I could find that give that studio monitor look. Aside from that, I have my hard drives. This guy is the one I do all of my work on. It's a two terabyte SanDisk. It plugs in through USB-C. Kind of wish it was Thunderbolt 4, but that gets really expensive. And I can just plug it in right here. Or I can plug it into the dock if I wanted to. Back here, there's a big fat GTEC RAID drive. Thank you very much, Adorama. And I have that set up so that whenever it's plugged in with this tiny sand disk, it will automatically dump all of my files onto it. So it's a big fat backup. And that is Thunderbolt 3. That was kind of a pain in the ass to set up with this MacBook. I needed to download some Thunderbolt 3 drivers and it had to like install them on the kernel level. It was really weird. Also, this desk is really nice. It's a standing desk. I go like that and then it goes whoop. Yeah, this the entire thing. Just one shot. One one long shot of it going up. And now and now I'm now I'm too tall for the camera. And then when I'm ready to leave, I just gotta make sure the hard drive is ejected. I usually just like to shut the whole thing down so I know that all of the hard drives are ejected. And then I can just unplug it and we're good to go check out the other setup. setup. It's not as glamorous as the other one. It, it centers around the same thing, the, the Razer dock. But here, instead of going USB-C out to two USB-C monitors, we're going USB-C to DisplayPort. These monitors are both 4K 60 Hertz through DisplayPort. One of them was good, but is really old. And the other one is just okay. I wouldn't recommend either of these monitors right now, but they work good in this setup. They actually work slightly better than the ones at the studio. The way resolution scaling in macOS works is really dumb and it's a little confusing. 
But basically when you pick a resolution in the settings, it doesn't actually change to that resolution. It just scales the UI elements bigger or smaller and it does it in a weird ratio. So in some cases, you might think you're lowering the resolution, but really Mac OS is raising it to like 5K for some stupid reason. Anyway, I have these set to 1080p, which is really 4K with 1080p elements and they look great. The big difference here is the display port. I wanted to go display port so I could get full quality on these two monitors. The one on the right doesn't do HDMI that well. It only has HDMI 1.4, so it can't do 4K 60 Hertz through that. It can only do it through display port. So I got this thing. It's a display port switcher. All the ones that I found were really expensive. This one was at least a reasonable price. The only thing that I don't love about it is that it only has USB 2.0 ports. So I got another one of those USB 3.0 switchers specifically for my audio interface. This display port switcher also does audio, which is fantastic. I can run audio straight into the Razer dock, but instead of doing that, I've just been using the interface. There are a lot of cables that went into this setup. Luckily that display port switcher came with a bunch of display port cables. I did have to get myself some USB-C to display port cables, which work fantastic. Just ignore that terrible cable management. I told you this one wasn't as glamorous. But now I can switch back and forth. If I wanna stream, I can use my PC. If I wanna do anything else, if I wanna do some editing, I could just use my MacBook hooked up to these monitors and the keyboard and the mouse. This is a Keychron K3 keyboard. And this mouse is just an old Logitech that I had. I've just been putting my MacBook right here in the corner. You might have seen on like Instagram ads or something, they make these like wooden docks you can put the, the MacBook into. Those are really expensive. So instead of getting one of those, I got one off of Etsy that's like from a Russian seller, but it's taken a while to get here. So that'll leave my dock vertical and I'll probably put it in the corner behind me right here. They do make all-in-one docks that allow you to slot the MacBook into and then it has like cables on the bottom and it goes into all of the ports on the MacBook. So it, it would replace this Razer dock it would be a vertical stand and a dock all in one, but I hate those because you're constantly plugging every port into the MacBook. And if they don't align right, you're gonna be scratching the sides and you could ruin your ports and, 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 the, and the dock itself. It's, it's, a, it's a really bad idea. Anyway, I just wanted to show this setup really quickly in case you wanted to do something using DisplayPort, which I think is maybe a good idea. It's just kind of difficult to find a good DisplayPort switcher. So thanks for, for watching. Everything I talked about today can be found in the description with affiliate links that help support the channel. Thank you very much. Anyway, you might want to turn on notifications for this channel because I don't have a schedule here. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good whatever.